Okay, so we continue with chapter 8. This lecture will talk about RL circuits and sequential switching. So let's look at this uh, simple, although not too simple, circuit with a single inductor. So we have voltage source resistor, a single inductor, and there is a switch. That switch is connected to uh, through just a wire for t less than zero, and at t equal to zero, the switch is flipped to connect it to this resistor R2 and the question we are being asked is find the current and the voltage in the inductor for all time. So we will go through the process we did last time although we saw last time that we really don't need to go through but once for an inductor circuit we will go through it. So we will go through the three steps. So we will say well step one draw and solve the circuit for t less than zero. So for t less than 0, this switch is connected here for and of course again we are assuming that the switch was in this position for a long time and so this circuit had achieved a DC steady state for t less than 0 in which case the inductor would be acting as a short circuit. There will be no voltage across the inductor. The current will be constant. All right? If the current is constant v is l di by dt i is dc so v is zero so we'll get a short circuit so we'll get this circuit so inductor behaves as a short circuit and so the inductor voltage of course is zero and the inductor current is v1 by r1 so the this the inductor current becomes an initial condition the inductor voltage we find here is really irrelevant because this is going to change as soon as the switch changes its position but as we know the inductor current will not change when the switch changes its position so this is our initial condition il is v1 by r1 step 2 we draw the circuit at t equal to 0 plus so this circuit is required as we saw last time to find all the initial conditions for the currents and voltages in the circuit so for our circuit so the now the resistor R2 is in the circuit and the inductor has a current V1 by R1 at this instant of time and so we will represent that current by a current source at this instant of time. All right. We, for a capacitor, we replace the capacitor by a voltage source at t equal to 0 plus. For an inductor, we can replace it by a current source. Why? Because the current, we, we know that the current is V1 by R1 in the inductor. The voltage can be anything, the current is V1 by R1. So we are the so we want to find the initial condition for the inductor voltage, the inductor current we already know. So we need to solve this circuit to find VL. So how do we find? This is one simple KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we say VR1 plus VL plus VR2 minus v1 equal to 0 or we are etc equal to v1 and we want to find vl so we write vl equal to v1 minus vr1 minus vr2 how much is vr1 and vr2 they are the voltages across the resistors we know the current the current is v1 by r1 so if we know the current we know the voltages across the resistors so we put all these number uh, expressions and we find of course that v1 minus this is r1 into v1 by r1 so which is just v1 so these two cancel and so we get minus r2 v1 by or minus r2 by r1 v1 so the voltage across the inductor is minus r2 by r1 into v1 the current we already knew so these become our initial conditions then step 3 we draw and solve the circuit for t greater than 0 so this is our circuit and as I said, let us solve it. So to solve this, of course, there is one loop. There are too many nodes. So the best thing is to write a mesh equation. So we'll write a mesh equation. So we'll say minus V1. The current is IL in this mesh. So minus V1 plus R1 IL plus the inductor voltage plus R2 IL equal to 0. So that is here. So this is IL and VL two unknowns but we know the current voltage relationship of the inductor so we write that so now we have two equations two unknowns we substitute for vl here so we get one differential equation in il 
uh, which is this and which can be written like this dil by dt plus il by tau equal to v1 by l where tau is equal to l by r1 plus r2 and i'm not solving this in fact i have not even included the solution i'm just writing the final answer here uh, so in fact so it turns out that il is v1 by r1 minus v1 by r1 plus r2 etc etc all right and the inductor voltage is nothing but l dil dt so once we found il we can differentiate il to find vl all right uh, so you i would i think it would be a good idea if you solve this differential equation on your own and find this expression for il all right that's once you should do it presumably it will help you in the mathematics course also uh, as homework i am ask so i am asking you to do that as homework and then i am asking you as homework to confirm that these equations can be derived from this form we had written last time right if x is il then x can be written as uh, or il can be written as il initial minus il final e raised to minus t by tau plus il final all right il initial we already know it's v1 by r1 so il final okay i think it's too simple but i'm not going to do it and please plot il and vl also for all time okay they are very similar to the ic and vc we drew we drew last time okay uh okay so with this uh, this expression at our command and for our use uh, this is one more homework this is a complicated looking circuit and there is only one energy storage element and inductor here 10 milli ohms current source resistor uh, and the switch is open for t less than 0 it is closed at t equal to 0 and your, the question is find IL, IX, VR, VA for all time. IL, IX, VR, VA for all time. Okay. So think about it. Everything that we've done till now, this lecture and the last lecture, you should be able to solve this circuit. If you are not and if you get stuck, please let me know where you get stuck and then I will tell you how to proceed. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to the next topic of this chapter. It is called sequential switching. And from my experience, this is one of the most uh, difficult topics that students find to, uh, to absorb and understand and to use. All right, so uh, please spend some time with this topic and solve a lot of problems with this because it is very important that you learn uh, this, uh, how this analysis is done. So here is a problem statement. The problem statement is we are given this circuit, uh, just one capacitor. The switch S is in position one for a long time. All right, so the, the circuit had reached steady state. The switch is moved to position two at T equal to zero, all right? That much we've done until now. Now the additional thing is the switch S is moved back to position 1 at some time T equal to T0. Alright, so this is the addition. So this, that's why this is called sequential switching because you are switching and switching again. Multiple switching we are doing one after the other. And the question is find Vc of T for all time. Alright, so you have to find Vc of T for all time. So now we will use all our knowledge that we have gathered or learned until now and then solve this circuit. All right. So we start of course with uh, the circuit for t less than 0. Because we are asked to find only Vc, we need to focus only on Vc, its initial condition, final condition, etc. etc. So you say for t less than 0, the switch was in position 1 and so the capacitor was fully charged to the voltage V1. So the capacitor voltage was V1 for T less than 0. Then we say okay the switch is moved at position 2 at T equal to 0. So we solve the circuit 
for t greater than 0 we have already solved it so i'm just going to directly write the expressions because we've already we know this is the form so we say well vc of t is equal to vi minus vf e raised to minus t by tau 2 plus vf this is a circuit we are solving now for so the first thing we do at every step is for the time period we are considering we draw the circuit all right it's very important that we draw the circuit so here once the switch is moved to position 2 now thing is happening with v1 r1 so the only circuit of relevance is this and we are solving for vc for this circuit so we say this expression where tau 2 is the time constant of this circuit only 1 r 1 c the time constant is r 2 c all right the initial value we already know initial value is v1 we already derived found that out what is the final value of the capacitor voltage in this circuit there is no voltage source in this circuit so the capacitor is going to just discharge through the resistor and eventually at t equal to infinity the capacitor voltage will become zero so vf is zero in this circuit so that this is zero this is zero so vc of t is simply v1 e raised to minus t by tau 2 which of course does go to zero as t tends to infinity now one very important point remember that when we are solving this circuit this circuit the circuit does not know that at t equal to t0 the switch is going to be opened all right the circuit does not know that we know that so the circuit behaves as if this switch is going to be here forever and so this equation when we derive we derive assuming that this switch is going to be here forever all right i repeat the equation we derive for this time duration for this circuit assumes that this switch will be in this position forever all right and so this is the answer then of course at t equal to t0 suddenly the switch will move position but that is the next step not this step okay so step three is what happens when the switch is moved so the switch is for t greater than t0 this is a circuit all right the switch have moved back to uh, connected to r1 now we want to find what is vc so this is a circuit for this circuit we know that the general expression for the capacitor voltage can be written as vc of t prime now because t prime is t minus t0 so uh, this expression was written assuming that t starts at t equal to 0 all right but now t is t0 so we define another variable t prime which is 0 uh, for the sake of this expression all right so we say we see how t prime is initial minus final e raised to minus t prime by the tau of this circuit now now we have a different circuit so it has a different tau the tau of this circuit of course is r1c so we say tau 1 i'm sorry this is uh gosh this is tau 1 not t1 my apologies for this all right so that is tau 1 uh and what else one second okay so initial value is what is a okay what is a final value first of all for this circuit for t greater than t0 this is a circuit for this circuit what is the final value of the capacitor voltage in this circuit finally the capacitor will acquire a voltage v1 all right we already saw that so we say v final is v1 v final we found tau1 we found vi1 we have to find what is vi1 vi1 is the voltage on the capacitor at the moment where the switch moved from position 2 to position 1 all right now what was what is that voltage the voltage on the capacitor will be the same as it was at time t equal to t0 in the previous circuit all right in this circuit this is a previous circuit for t less than c is t0 this was the circuit 
at t equal to t0 the switch is moved but at that point in time when the switch is moved the capacitor voltage will not change so whatever value the capacitor voltage had in this circuit will remain when the switch is moved to the other position so we find the capacitor voltage from this circuit so we say well what is a vc value at t equal to t0 so we say vc at t equal to t0 is v1 e raised to minus t0 by tau 2 and we know v1 we know t0 we know tau 2 so we know the value of vc at t0 so that becomes the initial condition vc at t equal to t0 is v1 e raised to minus t0 by tau 2 this is the initial value of the capacitor voltage for this circuit at t equal to t0 all right so with this now we have found vr1 vf1 and tau1 and therefore we can write the expression for vc all right so this is the expression for vc v final tau1 v final v initial which is derived from the previous circuit okay so this is the key and the crucial aspect of sequential switching that the initial value whenever the switch is moved the second time the initial value is calculated from the circuit from the circuit from the first switch all right anyway i am not saying this properly okay so please think about this understand this and get used to it all right okay with this okay so here is a plot so we let's let's go back to so we so at when the switch was in position 140 less than 0 the capacitor voltage was v1 when the switch moved to position 2 the capacitor started discharging so it was discharging uh, as we saw exponentially then it had dropped the voltage had dropped to some value less than v1 then we switched to move the switch back now the capacitor will charge back to v1 so that is the plot here so the initially it was v1 it started discharging exponentially and at t equal to t0 it started charging again exponentially and it will reach v1 at t equal to infinity i have shown a dashed line if the switch was not moved from position 2 to position 1 back at t equal to t0 if the switch was kept so that this continued then this would have continued and discharged to the a zero voltage at t equal to infinity all right now i am asking you to find and plot the capacitor current all right we found the voltage you should be able to find the current in fact simply by differentiating the equations for the capacitor voltage all right i i c c d v d t all right okay last thing solve this same circuit and find vc and i'm giving you values so v1 is 10 volts c is 20 microfarads r1 is 5 kilo ohms r2 is 20 kilo ohms and the switch is moved according to the following table so for t less than 0 the switch was in position 2 for a long time all right at t equal to 0 the switch is moved to position 1 then at 100 milliseconds it is moved to 2 then again at 500 milliseconds it is moved to 1 then again at 600 it is moved to 2 then again at 1 second it is moved to 1 all right so find vc of t for this entire for each actually so you will find an expression for each of these uh, conditions all right if you are able to do this then you would have mastered sequential switching all right so this is the end of chapter 8 we will start chapter 9 next time